Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good your money. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com. Uh, Monday edition. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody had a great uh, trading day. Uh, if you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, or even been watching for a long time, if you like the content, if you kind of like uh, the direction that we're going, and you know we're using our um, you know data skills for uh, future results, um, yep, just hit a quick like. That's all we're asking for. Hit a quick like, share, subscribe. Uh, all that stuff, and I'll hopefully continue to add value uh, into your journey. So again, pretty much uh, business as usual. Um, you know, pretty calm start to the week. You had the Nasdaq up about fifty. You had the S and P up about five. The Dow down about thirty. Uh, after last week's um, fireworks, right? I think that's the best way of saying it. Uh, before the Fourth of July holiday, with all these plethora of stocks, is going absolutely nuts. A little bit of a kind of a, a slower, more methodical day. Again, rotation in the market continues to be uh, pretty aggressive. Uh, even when stocks that broke out are resting, the money flow is going into other areas. Some uh, really aggressive uh, institutional money flow uh, continues to pour into the market. We'll give you, uh, I'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, but again, it's a big grind. It's one big grind. Uh, it's a bull market, um, and again, everybody's trying to uh, pick a top on everything and trying to short everything into strength. And the moral of the story is, it's a very simplistic formula. And until uh, the market starts losing a previous day's range, not opening range lows, not one minute lows, not thirty second lows, the market needs to lose the previous day's range for the stocks to start coming in. There's a big difference between. Uh, a stock is going down versus a stock is going lower. And you saw uh, this morning, you know, a name, for example, like Meta, right? Meta came in a little bit today, right? Meta's, you know, came in a little bit and the stock was down today, okay? It doesn't mean the stock is going to go lower. That means look at the run that Meta had and it put in the inside day with half the volume on Friday session. Again, this is a, you know, here is a point of reference of a stock that was down today, but it's not going lower. So you have to be very, very careful. You know, a lot of people, including myself, again, look, I'm doing this for a very, very long time, are, are looking at Tesla and they say, well, you know, the stock is up like 100 points, uh, 100 points just in the last, you know, a couple of weeks or so, or close to that. Um, it's definitely short. You know, look, look, I, I think the stock, like I said in the weekend update, I, I think the stock at some point this week, okay, will give us a blow off pause okay i don't want to use the word blow off top i think it's a very uh very concrete word that people try to uh act smart or you know try to guess a, an area i i think if you look at you know if you look at the similarities of where tesla's been and, and phenomenal guys absolutely phenomenal run we caught the whole move uh well we caught the majority of the move not the whole move the last three days i, I definitely did not catch uh, but we caught this whole move here from their intermediate range break to the uh, April 29th highs to the build around the 206 level. The last three days have been just absolutely insane. But if you look at Tesla, okay, and I'll show you a chart uh, of the video kind of side by side in a second, you'll see there's similarities. Okay, uh, you know, I, I somebody, you know, somebody today on social media when I, you know, when I tweeted out and I said, well, eventually in the next couple of days, we will probably get kind of a blow off pause uh, and the stock should give us a pretty good opportunity to the downside strictly because of gravity. Nothing fundamentals. Uh, the the narrative has really changed. It's super bullish right now. But again, guys, gravity is real. Okay. Uh, no matter how strong the stock is, when it goes parabolic and it goes into the next dimension of profits, okay? Eventually, it's going to come in, okay? Whether it's tomorrow, the next day, Thursday, the key for me is just kind of like what I said, and I want to segue into today's session from, uh, you know, picking a top of the market. I'm not looking to pick a top of the market. I couldn't care less how high Tesla goes. The value for me, right? And, and the value for me, because the stock is up 80, 100 points in the next couple of weeks, 
is obviously going to be that blow off pause to the downside. And like I just talked about, you know, potentially trying to pick tops, you don't need to pick a top on Tesla. That's the point. Just wait for this thing to take out a previous day's range, right? You see this every single day. What's the common denominator here, right? It's a high, right? A higher, a high, a higher low, 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 a higher low. All it takes is one lower lower low, and this thing's going to give us, a, you know, this thing's going to give us at least a, a pretty aggressive. Maybe it's a one day move, two day move, whatever the case may be. But that's where the trade's going to set up. Nobody's talking about, you know, where this company's going to be three years from now. It's just giving you every single. It's giving you every single signal to start watching out for that, you know, for that potential. Um, I don't always wear a rug pull, but a potential pregnant pause. Uh, for at least the trade. Now, if you look at Tesla's chart, I want to show you kind of a side-by-side -side similarity, right? Here's a chart on NVIDIA. Let me show you the daily chart, right? There was the chart on NVIDIA. You have a lot of similarities here, correct? The stock was just going, you know, parabolic, parabolic. And in between that parabolic move, as you can see here, when it finally did lose one day's worth of range, it gave like a ten dollar move, you know. Granted, stock, you know, exploded again. That's how we we're saying we're not looking for a top here. We're just looking for a pregnant pause type of trade. But you see the similarities here. So eventually, Nvidia, what did it do? Right? It put an inverted hammer. It lost the previous day's range, and that's the whole point. It lost the previous day's range, and when it took down that range, gave you know, it went went literally from one forty one all the way to 18. Now look at the you know look at the chart now on Tesla, right? It's 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 kind of setting up the same way. Again, can this rally be prolonged for another, you know, week? Absolutely, right? There you know again if you look at the notable bets, they were coming for the 260s, the 265s, the 270s, the 280s. They even went into the August 300 calls, right? So th this rally could at, at some point you know, keep on going and going and going. But the point is, I'm looking out for that previous day's range if it starts to lose, whether it's going to be uh, tomorrow, the next day, the next week. Yeah, there's no timetable. I'm not rushing into it, but I'm just conscious of the similarities that we've seen with NVIDIA. We've seen with 10,000 other uh, parabolic stocks. And I'm just kind of just, just you know, putting the, the, the notice on for traders, you know, be careful buying into strength. The stock broke out above 89 and confirmed above 91. This stock went to 260. It's talking about a 70-point move just in the last four days. So the idea of pushing the envelope more and more and more and more and more into strength, yeah, maybe you'll be right. But, you know, what happens if you're not? And that day, they finally do pull the plug. You could lose, you know, two, three weeks worth of performance in an hour. So just be very conscious. Again, the further a stock is away from its breakout level, the higher probability eventually will get pulled and it's on our radar. Whether it's for tomorrow, the next week, the week after, it is on our radar. And the higher it goes, the higher probability uh, we will get that pull. Other notable uh, names we talked about, NVIDIA, uh, for the last couple of days, finally getting out of this channel here. We saw pretty aggressive uh, call buying all morning, guys. Pretty much all day for the 135 and the 140. Uh, weeklies. Uh, Meta, you know, even though it had a rest day today, uh, inside day today, had, we saw some pretty big call buying coming in, uh, especially, right, especially for the September 600 calls. So, you know, with earnings season, and it sounds crazy to say, it feels like earnings season just ended, but with earnings season just around the corner again, you know, they're going to be start putting in some institutional flow into their quarterly reports. Uh, AMD that we covered uh, over the weekend, we talked about finally broke the range. This is now the highest close of this whole formation. Uh, they were coming for the 180s, 185s. I saw some 200s uh, for September's uh, in October's. But the group that definitely led today and actually held the NASDAQ, uh, helped the NASDAQ uh, maintain his grinds is semiconductors. You had AMD leading. Uh, you had NVIDIA waking up. Uh, SMCI had a massive move today, you know, 52 points. You had Avago, and the, the interesting part about Avago is uh, they, they, you know, they they reported a shelf. They, you know, they they uh, filed a shelf to raise some money, and the bulls, you know, were so aggressive that they bought back the stock. They, you know, they bid it right back up, trapped shorts. So the market's healthy, right? And market's healthy. Uh, Apple continues to be an absolute rock star. Uh, you have names, for example, like Google, just a completely, completely big, big move today inside day. 
uh, from Friday's session. So overall, the market is very healthy. But but again, don't get complacent, guys. Okay, don't get complacent. A again, in 2000, middle of 2000, during the dot-com era, I thought it was never going to end. I really did. I, I go, wow, I'm going to be retired by 27. This is like the easiest thing ever. Bulls every single day. Everything is flying, going crazy. But the reality is the music did stop. Nobody was prepared for it. Nobody really had an inkling of what was about to happen next, followed by 9-11 and all that stuff. And probably the worst two years of trading uh, from 2001 to 2003, by far in my career, without you know going into a lot of details. A lot of you guys already know the story. But the point is, be smart, guys. Be smart. Uh, you know, leave the stocks that are tremendously overextended alone. Leave those stocks. You know, if they already had runs 20, 30, 40, 50%, 200%, you know, the more you keep on pushing, the higher probability they will get pulled. Again, you want to get stocks coming out of bottom channels, out of ranges. Those are the ones with the biggest moves. That's why Tesla exploded, right? This is why Tesla exploded because it came off the bottom. This is why AMD finally exploded the last couple of days because it's coming off the bottom. That's the common denominator. So I know it's hard because a lot of names are really, really strong right now, but that's our discipline. We have to find those names that are coming off uh, the bottom. So here are the pivots uh, for today. Uh, here are the pivots for today. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, so uh, AMD broke out on Friday from the 6682 level. Uh, you know, here is the notes. You know, AMD needs to confirm uh, the May... Uh, May 28th highs of 174.55. They closed at the highs of the day in the 178s. Uh, crowd, you know, it, it went off the open. You know, went up about three dollars and really turned around and crashed. Uh, Amazon, you know, gave an initial move above two hundred dollars and fifty-five cents. You know, traded up to the two hundred ones and then it reversed as well. Meta, this is kind of my point. Not everything exploded today. It was more of a muted day today. Meta had a massive, massive move on Friday. Broke out above the 511, 513 level. Uh, here is my notes. It needs to confirm the pre-market highs, uh, 544.79, which it did not. And here's kind of the, you know, here's kind of our trades for today. Uh, Nvidia was good, was really good. Uh, 129 needs to build. Traded on almost up to 121. Um, I still like a little bit of selling pressure. There was a big seller there in the afternoons, but nice pop of nearly two bucks uh, off the pivot. Uh, AI, again, another name uh, that is coming off the bottom. AI 3021 is the June 14th highs, needs to build. Again, not a massive move. Like I said, you know, a lot of names were were muted, but again, it traded up, you know, traded up to almost, you know, up a dollar, almost up a dollar before uh, a reversal. And ironically, I actually caught a, a pivot to Tesla to the downside. Uh, Tesla opened up weak, put in opening range lows, and I shorted through the lows. You know, yeah, it took like a dollar and change out of it. I always use break even as my stop. Again, every trade, uh, once you get cash flow, it becomes a free trade, uh, especially if you're trading the intraday rank. So I always use break even as my stop. But, you know, nice little pop, you know, excuse me, nice little wash uh, in the morning uh, for some cash flow. But the most important part, guys, and this is something uh, you really want to remember not every single day you're going to get these massive. 10 20 30 dollar moves maybe you know some stocks will maybe some stocks won't but the point is sometimes the stocks that you're watching they're going to rest and i say this all the time when the market rests you rest uh with it let me give you guys uh, a couple of names uh that i am watching for tomorrow that is a uh, non uh beta obviously we're watching tesla for any potential move lower uh or blow off pause uh look at envx again with name we've covered uh several times over the last year uh, setting up for a uh, move. You got MCHP. Again, uh, try to find semiconductors that haven't gone parabolic yet. Uh, MCHP is one of them. As you can see here, it's trying to just get a build, building a base above the 50-day moving average. It just needs to take out this whole range here from the beginning of June. If it can, it might wake up here. So keep an eye on that. Um, I still like AMD. I, I still think there's probably another one or two days uh, in the name just because how long it was in this range. Um, you know, any dips tomorrow into weakness, you know, again, it'll, it'll probably be a good idea to buy into rising support or daily support if it gets there. Uh, but if it gets above this linear regression line for tomorrow, I think there is more uh, upside. And um, guys, watch Chewy. And the reason why I say that, so everybody knows the story with, with this and Roaring Kitty and all that stuff. There was a, a buyer came in for the January 3250 calls. 725,000. On the surface, it really doesn't, you know, strike a chord. But how many people are really taking, you know, how many really people are really taking positions 
that deep out of the money with three quarters of a million dollars, right? Probably not many. So I want to pay attention to showing you in the next couple of days. If we start seeing more call buying coming in and those expirations start to get uh, you know, start to get shorter in, in duration. I want to watch this baby channel here because if it can reclaim that five-day moving average, knowing that there is option flow, maybe we could catch lightning in a bottle of this thing before uh, the general public uh, even has uh, an inkling of going on. That's it, guys. Have a great night, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. And with God's help, I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Take care.